Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are in the world, this is Mr. Roy and I'm so happy that I'm going to be your mathematics teacher today. Don't forget to subscribe to our New Century Academy channel and you can scroll down to the bottom of this video. You see our several links on very interesting videos that you should watch before watching this one. Based on so many students' complaints on this topic, that is why I have decided to break this topic down so that you can understand it today. Matrix. Matrix is a topic that a lot of students don't understand and cannot find its relevance to their everyday life. Today I'm going to let you know that you see matrix everywhere around you. Alright, follow me, let's start. Now, we are going to be talking about four things in matrix. One, what matrix is. Two, the definition of matrix. Three, the order of matrix. And lastly, real and imaginary numbers. What is matrix really? I have a very short demonstration for you so that you can appreciate what matrix is. In front of us, we have two beakers. Let's call this beaker one, and let's call this beaker two. Now, let us assume that I put into beaker one three blue markers. Three blue markers and one green marker so in Bika 1 we have three blue markers and one green marker in Bika 2 I put into the Bika one blue marker and one green marker so this is information how do I represent this information on a surface, on a paper? Let me try one scenario for you. Now, I can decide to draw the beakers. I can decide to draw the beakers. And in beaker 1, I label this beaker 1 and I label this beaker 2. In beaker 1, I have one green marker, so I write G to represent green, one green marker, and I have three blue markers, I use B L to represent blue, and I write three blue markers in it, okay? So in Bika 1, we have one green marker and three blue markers. Now, in Bika 2, we have also one green marker and one blue marker okay so this is one way of representing the information i have in these two beakers on a piece of paper okay on a piece of paper but matrix does better matrix will interpret this information in a very shortened form. Let me show you how matrix does it. Now, instead of drawing these diagrams and writing all these labelings and writing, you can see how confusing it is. But matrix does a better job. Now, matrix will do this. Okay. Then there will be green here. There will be blue here, B, L. One beaker one and beaker two. Okay, so in beaker one, how many green markers do we have? Certainly one. In beaker one, how many blue markers do we have? We have three. In beaker two, 
How many green markers do we have? We have one. In Bika 2, how many blue markers do we have? We also have one. Okay? So, if you compare these two scenarios, you will agree with me that Matrix does a better job in giving you a shortened interpretation of the information that we have. Now, let's bring this idea to our everyday life. Let's assume you have a shop, you have five shops in London, for instance, and what you do, you just sell Manchester United jerseys and Chelsea jerseys. So in each of your five shops, you have jerseys for Manchester United and jerseys for Chelsea. You would agree with me that you can use matrix to represent the, the, the number of jerseys you have in your store at a given point in time. Okay? So even as a businesswoman, matrix can help you. Right? Yes, matrix can help you. For instance, let's say you own a shop somewhere in, in, in France, somewhere in France, and you, you let's say you have two shops and you sell ladies' stuffs and guys' suits. So ladies' dresses and guys' suits. That's all you sell. But you have two shops, and in each shop, those are the two things you sell. You will also agree with me that Matrix can help you compute the content of your two shops. So you see matrix is a relevant topic to our everyday life but it doesn't end there with matrix you can also code your information because there is a way i can represent this and use color codes to represent what green is and what blue is so bottom line is matrix can also be used as a coded information with simultaneous equation you can also use matrix to solve your simultaneous equation. With vectors, matrix is also very, very relevant. So, matrix is all around us and is very, very relevant to our everyday life. So, that is what matrix is. Now that we are done with explaining what matrix is and its relevance to our everyday life, let us look at the definition of matrix. So, what is matrix? Matrix is the arrangement of data, information, numbers in a rectangular fashion, okay? In a rectangular way, in a rectangular shape. For example, for example, this. This is an example of a matrix, okay? So, this one, one, three, three. You can see this is arranged in a rectangular fashion. Okay, another example of matrix, you can also have this, let's say 3, 0, 4, 1, 1, 3. Okay, this is an example of matrix as well. Another example of matrix is just about arranging numbers in a rectangular fashion. Okay, it can be any number really look any single digit okay so these are examples of matrix you can see that the data of course this number represents something maybe number of jerseys number of cars in your garage number of markers in a beaker and so on but the data and the information must be arranged in a rectangular fashion okay now this is another example of matrix two four eight nine someone may just ask and say mr roy but well, this does not look like a rectangle yes this look like a rectangle because you can easily complete this and it gives you a rectangular shape you can easily complete that and it gives you a rectangular shape but when you do this mr roy i have to get two here you have two numbers on, on this side then two numbers on that side isn't this a square hmm. isn't this a square actually a square is a rectangle now what is a rectangle a rectangle is a quadrilateral that has four right angles okay so any quadrilateral that has four right angles is called a rectangle in other words a square 
is also a rectangle. A square is also a rectangle. Simply put, all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are square. Okay? So, you have some matrices that you call square matrix. Alright? Square matrix. This is an example of a square matrix. 3, 1, 0, 4. This is a square matrix. Okay? While this matrix I'm about to write is not a square, a square matrix. This is a square matrix and this is not a square matrix. It is very important you are able to identify which one is a square matrix and which one is not a square matrix. The next thing we'll be talking about are real numbers and imaginary numbers. What are real numbers? Hmm. Just as the name um, says, real numbers are numbers that are real. Real numbers are numbers you can find on a number line. Negative numbers are real numbers. Zero is a real number. Positive numbers are real numbers. Okay. So if all the numbers you can find on a number line are real numbers, Mr. Roy, so which one is an imaginary number? Let me show you. Now, I'm sure you know that the square root of 4 is equals to plus or minus 2. Okay? Of course, 4 is a real number because it can be found on a number line. Positive 2 is a real number because it can be found on a number line. Negative 2 is a real number because it can be found on a number line. Okay? What if I show you this? What is the square root of negative 4? You would probably say it is impossible. But it's also important that we assume that the answer to this question is an imaginary answer. It's an answer that is imaginary. So the square root of negative 4 is an example of an imaginary number. But not to worry, don't bother yourself about imaginary numbers because the matrix we'll be talking about in this series will deal only with real numbers. Mm. Now we're done with that. The next thing we'll be talking about is the order of matrix. Is the order of matrix. Now, let's take this out, okay? Now, let's look at this matrix. This square matrix. This is 3, let's say this is 3, 1, 9, 8, okay? The numbers can be any single digit. So, I'm not a genius bringing up this number. I'm just writing anyone. But in reality, they represent something very tangible. Now, every mat matrix can have, or every matrix, all matrix have rows and columns. Yes, all matrices have rows and columns. So, if you look at this matrix closely, you will see that you have column 1 and you have column 2. Okay? So the number of columns in this in this matrix is equals to two. Let's use another color for that. Now the number of rows in this matrix is one and two. So the number of rows is equals to two. Okay, so every matrix has rows and columns. In this case, we have one, two columns and one, two rows. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's assume we have a matrix that is not a square matrix. Four, three, zero, one. 
3, 5. Okay? How many columns do we have in here? We have 1, column, 2, columns, 3, columns. So the number of columns we have here is equals to 3. Okay? Let me take out this 2. While the number of rows we have in this matrix rows is 2. Okay? So you see, all matrices have rows and columns. So where does the order of matrix come in? The order of matrix is always expressed as rows by columns. The order of matrix is always expressed in rows by columns. So the order of this matrix, the order of this matrix will be 2 by 2. Okay? While the order of this matrix will be what? I'm sure you get that. Okay? 2 by 3. Okay? So, we've talked about what matrix is. We've talked about the definition of matrix. We've talked about real and imaginary numbers. And lastly, we've talked about the order of matrix. Again, this is the beginning of a new series in the New Century Academic channel. Don't forget to click on the link below this video and don't forget to subscribe as well. Let's go for a short break so that we'll have time to quickly digest what we talked about so far. Welcome back. I'm sure you've gone through this summary and you understood everything on the summary. Before we move on, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, New Century Academy, and don't also forget to click on the link below this video because we have very, very interesting video specially made for you. Now, we'll continue with our topic, Matrix. We'll be talking about leading or principal diagonal of a matrix. We're going to be talking about the determinant of matrix and norm and identity matrix. And lastly, we'll be doing some addition and subtractions in matrix. Let's go. Now, since we said that matrix is about rectangular arrangement of numbers, data, and information. Therefore, there must be a diagonal in a matrix, okay? Because every rectangle has two diagonals in them, all right? If this is a rectangle, this is one diagonal, and this is another diagonal. But we are going to be talking about principal 
or leading diagonal okay principal or leading diagonal so this is what we are going to be talking about now mathematicians settled for one of these diagonal to be the principal or leading diagonal in a matrix why did they settle for one and left the other one that I'm going to tell you now now let's look at this matrix this square matrix okay the numbers in the matrix are called entries this is new okay I'm mentioning this for the first time but it's important you get it very well entries and numbers in a matrix of course the numbers represent something in real life they represent information numbers of cars you know numbers data and all of that so the numbers in a matrix are called entries you must be able to express the position of each entry in a matrix let me quickly tell you how to do that now what is the position of the entry 4 hmm, what is the position of entry 4 now the position of an entry is expressed by its row and its column. So, the position of each entry position is expressed by its row, the row it belongs to, comma, the column it belongs to as well. So, what is the position of, of entry 4? The position of entry 4, let's say this is entry 4, the position of entry 4 will be, let's use A to represent entries, okay? The position of entry 4 will be, because 4 belongs to row 1, it will be 1, comma, 4 also belongs to column 1, okay? So it will be row 1, column 1. So this is the position of entry 4 good now what is the position of entry 3 okay let's use our A to represent entries we're trying to look for the position of entry 3 entry 3 belongs to row 1 how do I know it belongs to row 1 I can quickly do this this is the first row and this is the second row let me just label it one and two. Let me bring out the columns with color red. This is column one and this is column two. Good. Now that we've drawn all the rows and the columns, it will be much easier. Now the position of three, of entry three, row one and column two. One comma two. The position of entry 1, this one here, A, this is entry 1, the position, because it belongs to row 2 and column 1, I'm going to write 2, comma 1. The position of entry 0, this 0 here, position of entry 0 will be row 2, column 2. So I'm going to have 2, 2. Hmm interesting now back to why we are explaining all of this principal and leading diagonals now when you look at this let's use the position of each entry to represent our matrix so let's draw this here carefully so position of 4 will be a11 a1 comma 1 okay the position of 3 will be A12, A1, comma 2. The position of 1 will be A21, A, comma, A21. The position of 0 will be A22. Hmm. Now, when you look at this diagonal, and this diagonal 
you will notice that with the diagonal with black ink there is something special about it the two numbers that represent the positions are the same one one two two for the other diagonal the, the two numbers that represent the position is 1, 2 and 2, 1. They are not the same. This is 2, 1 here. Okay, they are not the same. Unlike, unlike 1, 1 and 2, 2. Now, because the numbers that represent the positioning of the entries in this black diagonals are the same, 2, 2 and 1, 1, we settle for this as the principal diagonal. Okay? We settle for this as the principal diagonal. So, if this is a, a matrix, a square matrix 3, 5, 8, 9, this will be the principal diagonal of the matrix. And that is the principal diagonal of the matrix. Now the next thing we're going to be talking about is the determinant of a matrix. Mm. Now, when you look at matrices, there are different types of matrix of course. You have a square matrix, is an example of a square matrix, we've talked about this before. And you also have a not square matrix, 2, 1, 4, 9, it's possible to also have this. Okay, this is a square matrix, this is not a square matrix. Now, the determinant of a matrix is a single number that represents a matrix. Because while we can have complicated matrix numbers everywhere, we can actually calculate a number that represents a matrix and that is advantageous. So even if you give me a very complicated matrix, like 4, 9, 6, 8, 1, 0, 5, 8, 6, 1, 2, 4. You know, even if you give me all these complicated matrices, you know, I can use a particular number, I can use a particular number to represent each of them. And that is what the determinant of a matrix is. So what is the determinant of a matrix? The determinant of a matrix is that single number that can represent a matrix, that can represent a matrix, okay? So that is the determinant of a matrix. Now, how do you calculate the determinant of a matrix? How do you find that single number that can represent your matrix? That can represent your complicated matrix very easy i'm going to show you now now let's look at the square matrix how do you find the determinant of a square matrix let's use this one for instance four one three zero first thing you multiply the entries in the principal diagonal okay so four times zero. Four times zero will give us what? Because it is zero. Then you multiply the entries in the counter diagonal. Okay? This diagonal right here, this diagonal right here, the one in black, is called the principal diagonal because we talked about that. But the one in red is called a counter. It's called a counter diagonal. It's not the principal diagonal. Okay, it's called a counter diagonal. It is not the principal diagonal. So, back to our determinant. Now, to calculate the determinant of a matrix, you multiply the entries in the principal diagonal first and that is 4 times 0 that gives us 0 then you multiply the entries in the counter diagonal that will be 3 times 1 and that will be 3 
okay that's not all what is left is very easy so what you do you subtract the multiples of sorry the product not multiple you you subtract the multiple the product of all the entries in the counter diagonal let me use the right color for that green this time this is three right so the product of the counter diagonal is three the product of the principal diagonal is zero so what you do you subtract the product of the counter diagonal from the product of the principal diagonal so your answer here negative 3. So as far as this matrix is concerned, the determinant is negative 3. Okay? How do you calculate the determinant again? You multiply the entries in the principal diagonal. You keep it, you keep the product somewhere. You multiply the entries in the counter diagonal. You keep the product somewhere. Then you subtract the product of the counter diagonals from the entries of the principal diagonal and your answer will be your determinant and determinant is very very important because it is that single number that represents your matrix okay so we are done with that the next thing we're going to be talking about is the identity and a null matrix a null matrix is also called a zero matrix okay so a null matrix is also called a zero matrix let's start with that now what if I have let me quickly bring my two beakers back that analogy will be fantastic here as well let's take all the markers out now unlike before we have our two beakers here again but let me check inside whether there is anything. There is no marker at all. Picker 2. There is no marker at all. What does that show? There is nothing in the matrix. There is nothing in the matrix. And this is what you call a zero matrix. So a zero matrix will have just zeros as its entry. Okay, so this will be called a zero Okay, a zero matrix is a matrix that have only zeros as its entries. Okay, so this is an example of a zero matrix. Okay, I'm sure you get that. Now, the next thing, of course, zero matrix is also called a null matrix. You can also call it a null matrix. Now, let's go to the next which is identity matrix hmm. identity matrix an identity matrix is a matrix that has a determinant of one is a matrix that represents one okay in the world of matrix identity matrix is the same as numerical one okay so that is what that is now if we say that an identity matrix has a determinant of 1. Let's say this is an identity matrix. Identity, you can also call it a unit matrix. Identity or a unit matrix. If we say the determinant of an identity matrix has to be 1, that means it can only have this. The, the entries can only be this. Any other matrix that don't have this entry cannot be an identity matrix. Cannot be an identity matrix. Now let's prove it. Let's show ourselves that the determinant of this matrix is 1. Now, when you're finding your determinant again, you bring out your principal diagonal. Okay, use green for that. Then I use red to bring out the counter diagonal. I find the product of the principal diagonal, which is 1 times 1, which is equals to 1. I find the product of the counter diagonal, which is 0 times 1, which is 0. Okay? Now, 
Now when I am done with that, I subtract the product of the counter diagonal. I subtract it from the product of the principal diagonal and the answer will be the determinant of this matrix. As you can see, the determinant is 1. Okay? Is 1. So, this is an identity matrix. So what's an identity matrix? An identity matrix is a matrix that has a determinant of 1. Okay? Very good. I'm sure you've really understood everything that we've talked about so far and this is what we do here in this academy. We break difficult topics down so that they become simple. We've been talking about matrix so far and matrix to be honest gives a lot of students you know, tough times but I'm sure you agree with me that so far we've been able to break this topic down so that it is simple. To watch more of our videos so for, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel the New Century Academy uh, YouTube channel and don't forget to